And we're back, intercompany transactions. Topic two, elimination entries for inventory. The key concept here is that profit earned on intercompany sales of inventory cannot be recognized for the consolidated entity until that inventory has been sold to an outside entity. I briefly discussed this in the post amble uh, of last video. So feel free to, to go back and re-listen to the, just the end portion of that. Um, but yeah, intercompany profit on inventory for inventory is still held within the group must be eliminated. The same principle applies to intercompany sales of other non-depreciable assets, such as land. Here's where I want to talk about the difference between upstream transactions and downstream transactions. First, an upstream transaction is when a subsidiary sells to a parent and moves up the org chart. And, um, you know, just outside of the scope of this course, because we will be dealing with strictly between parent and sub, uh, one parent, one sub, the same principles do apply when talking about multiple subs and a parent. Um, so if and when you use this outside of class, it should be noted that transactions between subsidiaries are also referred to as being upstream. So to recap, when a sub sells a parent something, moves up the org chart, that's upstream, and transactions between subsidiaries are also considered to be upstream. Okay. Whereas downstream transactions are when a parent sells to a sub and you're moving down the org chart. Let's look at a basic example. Large Inc. owns 100% of Small Inc. In 2019, Large sold Small inventory for $500,000. The inventory had a cost to Large of $250,000. Small had sold half the inventory to outside parties as at the end of the year. Based on this, Large would have recorded a profit of $250,000. Half, um, half of this profit can be realized as the inventory has been sold outside of the group at year end, but we need to eliminate the half that has not been sold to the outside group. So how do we do that? Well, remember, um, we need to reverse uh, where the profit would be sitting. So right now our inventory is overstated for small and our cost of sales is understated as well. So we need to debit cost of sales to eliminate to that unrealized profit of 125,000. And we need to reduce our inventory by that profit uh, portion of 125,000. This calculation must be done for any unrealized profits in both opening inventory as well as ending inventory uh, to see the net adjustments as needed. So friendly reminder, if you are you know, starting the financial statements for 2020, you would need to uh, do this journal entry to show what, um, what is impacting the opening balance sheet. Uh, the one thing that would you, what you would do though, is because this happened in 2019 when doing the opening financial statements for 2020, any income statement accounts, such as cost of goods sold, would simply be replaced by saying opening retained earnings or just retained earnings because uh, there is no income statement in an opening set of financial statements, just the balance sheet. Okay. So the difference between upstream and downstream uh, transactions here. In an upstream transaction, the profit was made by the subsidiary, which means the profit holdback or elimination will proportionally affect the net income attributable to the non-controlling interest, the NCI, and the net income attributable, attributable to the parent. And this is when the parent doesn't own 100% of the sub. However, in a downstream transaction, the profit was made by the parent, so the NCI is not affected in any way. This is because the parent owns 100% of the parent. Again, this is not conventionally discussed like that. You know, parent owns 100% of itself, uh, and it's not wrong. And in fact, it's actually very right, but perhaps more conversational than you'd be used to finding in an advanced accounting course. Uh, 
So my question to you is, before the actual question of this video, which do you think uh, students prefer to see, upstream transactions or downstream transactions? Well, if you said downstream transactions, you would be correct. Uh, if you said neither, you would be very wrong. <laughs> yeah. um, if you said downstream, you'd be correct because there's one fewer piece to think about. Like, oh crap, what do we do with NCI um, if the parent doesn't, in fact, own 100% of the sub? So, okay, just uh, kind of a little brief aside. Now it's time for your question. H owns 70% of J. J sold H 250 tables for $40 each, which originally cost $15 for J to make. What is the portion of this profitable attributable to the NCI? Is it A, 6,250, B, 1,875, C, 4,375, or C, zero dollars? For me, D, zero dollars. Well, if you said B, $1,875, you would be correct. And that's because you have to take the number of tables that were sold, which is uh, the difference between what was sold for uh, and the uh, price in which it cost, you know, basically the ending uh, inventory. And that's your total amount of profit. And then you need to take a look at um, the NCI portion. So the portion that is not H's company, which is 30%. And that gives you the 1,875. I threw in the zero because um, this really comes down to the fact that it could be zero if in fact, instead of um, J selling to H, it could have been H selling to J. And then there wouldn't be um, any uh, NCI impact as it would be a downstream transaction. But in the upstream transaction, uh, when there is not 100% ownership, then you have to take into consideration what part of the not your company uh, gets a portion of that profit. Okay, uh, thank you so, so much. A few more videos and then, uh, then on to some practice. Thanks, guys.